with everything going outside, streaming is on the rise in a big way. A lot of YouTubers I follow are streaming now more than they ever have in the past, simply because more people are at home and they need distractions. And that is something I can definitely get behind. So today, so I can be a part of that distraction, I'm gonna be entertaining you with my streaming setup. We're gonna talk about OBS, how I have it set up, what hardware I'm using, and all that jazz. Let's get into it. But starting off, we have my little arm back here. I talked a little bit about this. Uh, this is the guy who is uh, holding up my camera mount when I am streaming. And I forgot the name of it already, but um, I will uh, put that down in the description box. So look in the description box for a lot of these things. This is just an old model by Acer that I'm using as mostly for streaming just to see my chat and um, how I look in my camera. Over here is the main monitor for my gaming systems where I do all the gaming on the 1440p uh, monitor by Dell. So it's the S3219D um, is what this is, it's a 32 inch monitor. I love this monitor even though it's 60 hertz. I know a lot of people uh, like monitors that are much higher frame rate than that, but I'm fine with 60 hertz for now. Down here uh, is where all the audio it's coming from in my Amazon Basics mic. You guys seen the video of that. Check the cards for that. And tucked right underneath there is the Behringer audio interface. Again, check the cards for the video I did. Both of those um, were in the same video. And of course, up top, you can check the cards for this video, but it is very, very old. This is the Samsung, um, what is that? SR850 very old headphones um there are better headphones now for about the same price i paid for these literally four years ago i think now um if not longer probably four years ago i think is when i got those and when i did the video for them um they are not in the best condition now they shed their it's skin all over my darn desk so i am looking for replacements but in a nutshell that is my setup. Okay, before we get into uh, my OBS setup and its settings and all that kind of stuff, let me tell you real quick about what OBS actually is. OBS is a free streaming software. Um, you can use it for pretty much any scale project, big or small. Like here on YouTube, you see multiple streams for gaming and education commonly. Um, and of course, uh, other things as well, but you can also use it for much bigger projects as well. If you need to have like multiple people on the screen talking at the same time, all on stream, if it is streaming, OBS can do it. Um, however, the difference between whether you want to actually use it or not is going to come down to the tools that OBS offers and whether they fit your needs or not. If they do not, there is multiple other streaming apps and software that you can use that will most likely fit what it is, whatever it is you want to do. But for us here on this channel, which do things by budget and also get up and running pretty quickly, it's best to use OBS. They have a huge community that you can uh, tap into for anything you need to know. And here on YouTube, there's a number of good YouTubers that will teach you everything you need to know about OBS. One of them in particular that I definitely want to shout out is Epos Vox. So check down in the description box down below and maybe up in the cards if I can do it. I will uh, put a link to his channel. He is an OBS guru. He has multiple tutorials and how to's uh, to show you about everything in OBS and even how to fix a lot of issues you may run into when using certain software or certain hardware hardware with OBS that that um, will be really, really nice to know. So just hop on over there and check that out. Now let's get into how I have OBS set up. Okay, so this is my typical OBS setup. I'm going to make my window a little bit bigger uh, just to make it easier to see me while I'm doing this recording. Uh, let's make myself a little bit bigger here. There we go. Um, and that is all to, cause I'm going to talk to you guys about the layout or what OBS calls the scene. Um, so you can set up different scenes in OBS to do all kinds of things. Right now I have a game going in the background, just as a little bit of movement uh, going on here while I'm talking. This is, uh, 
the division too and this is a game that i play multiple times <laughs> on stream if you guys are on my stream you have seen this game pop up quite a few times um but this is my typical obs stream on this channel we like to follow the kiss method which is keep it simple stupid <laughs> and i don't really do much more than this so i have the game going in my background i have myself down in the corner usually i'm actually up in the top corner a little bit smaller and uh, that is what works uh, best for me. Sometimes you will have to move yourself around and sometimes you may have to do, do that while you're on stream. We will get into how you modify your layout um, in OBS and uh, change it and do all kinds of little bitty things, but not too much, but we, we will talk about that a little bit later. So the key thing to understand about my setup is that this is a one PC setup. This is a, a, a single PC setup. I don't have multiple PCs set up, but because I have one here, this game and pretty much all the games that I run uh, on my stream, I have to run in window mode in order for me to be able to move my cursor out of the window and check you no know, OBS or check YouTube or anything like that. Um, if I was running multiple computers, I would not have to do that. Um, but like I said, we will talk a little bit more about uh, running multiple computers on stream a little later. Okay, now I jumped out of the game so I can uh, better show you guys my full OBS layout, uh, which I can't really do while I'm recording a game or anything like that so it's gonna be a little bit weird but i opened up a second instance of obs and put the screen to black that way you don't see any sort of infinite uh hold pretty much feature where obs will literally just so like multiple multiple instances of a window because it's recording itself that's recording itself that's recording itself over and over and over again so it's a, that may be a little bit distracting so i decided to not do that and instead just load up a second instance with a black screen that way I can better show you guys my layout here. So now let me decrease myself um, on the screen here. So let's uh, go ahead and shrink me down a bit here. There we go. Okay, that way I can just better show you guys everything. So here in this main um, black area, like I was saying before, is where the scenes are set up. Now how they're set up is down below in this area that says scenes. Here I have a few scenes set up and I'll go ahead and show you guys the infinite loop. So that's what it does. That's that's the infinite loop here where you see it um, over and over again. But more importantly, uh, here in this area is where I have um, all my elements for this particular scene, which I call desktop uh, set up. So now in here I have my Behringer main audio that's what you see got we see the um the audio recording here by this line that's moving um back and forth into the green and yellow sometimes red and then you see the g85 here underneath here that is my camera that i'm using to record myself that you're seeing me through here that's my panasonic g85 down here is the display capture display capture is actually uh oh just one of obs is built in um features for when it comes to sources so obs has multiple sources that you can add into your scene and if you add a display capture that just allows it to capture the display like right now we are capturing the display of my desktop and if you can switch it up you can capture uh, another display which is maybe my secondary display or if you have multiple monitors you can use display capture to capture the display of any one of those monitors and set it all up here into your scene and you can shrink it down make it small or whatever it is or however you want it to look over on the side here i have uh, a youtube chat so this is a little trick that i had to learn to use i had to google this to figure out how to put youtube chat right here in my obs i didn't need it on my stream and the way that works is by going into the view docs um, customize browser docs and here we have my youtube chat and this is literally the basic um pop out chat url that comes directly from youtube and the only thing i have to do is change this little id at the end of the url every stream to the actual stream id for that i'm that for the current stream that i'm doing so every stream i will come in here update the id to that particular stream id and then i will have the chat sitting right here no problems now if you want to have your chat 
overlaid on your stream while you're streaming so you have your chat maybe off to the left or right of you while you're actually streaming you're gonna need to get used to using overlays um there's a bunch of different tools you can use to, to do that um obs obviously lets you overlay um more than a few things while you're building the scene that's pretty much all you're doing is overlaying one element on top of the other like myself right now you see is overlaid on top of my desktop uh, view so those two elements are overlaid over each other when it comes to overlays uh, services such as stream elements becomes quite important it, it really depends on how far you want to take your stream elements is they, they tend to lean a little bit more towards twitch users but they do have some good things in there that youtube streamers can use as well uh, most importantly they have the ability to allow you to build an entire scene an entire scene that you can bring into obs you can build it using stream elements uh back in in their dashboard and tools and save it on their server so that you will have a url that you can import into your obs and be able to use your scene saved on their servers pretty much on any streaming computer that you're on that you have that is using obs you can go ahead and just use the browser element um, add that into your scene put the link in there and that's your whole uh, scene that you created in stream elements right there in your obs so it's pretty darn convenient and there's a lot of other things you can do uh, with it as well i'll actually head over to the alpha gaming youtube channel he talks quite a bit about stream elements and of course you can just uh jump all, all around youtube as well to see how to set it up and tutorials on that now in this section over here with all the audio um don't forget that you also have this section where you can do your filters and prop and uh, properties and filters uh, this is where I set up things such as my noise suppression, uh, my gain. So uh, if I want to boost my mic a bit, which I do need to pretty much all the time, you will need to um, add a little bit of boost to uh, your mic. It really depends on your mic setup. And of course, uh, your noise gate. This is what makes it so that your mic does is not always recording. Instead, there is thresholds where it is listening to how loud um the audio coming into the mic is so that it will open uh the threshold and start recording audio and of course when the, when the sound goes too low uh it will close that threshold and um stop recording audio at least from the mic itself that way uh you know you don't have um just uh you don't have like constant recording and of course it also allows that you can just relax a little bit and not have to worry about every single thing you do going into your stream audio maybe you want to breathe a little bit you know maybe you want to take a little sigh you know maybe a little, little deep breath you know you you probably don't want that going into your stream and of course the limiter if you're someone like me who might um raise his voice from time to time on his stream uh especially while he's gaming <laughs> um you might want to use a limiter that way it will uh digitally uh limit the how high the sound gets on your stream so that's something to think about as well so these filters these built-in filters that obs offers is very very useful you should definitely you definitely should not forget them another thing you shouldn't overlook is over in your settings most importantly is coming down to the output tab here so stream come down to the output tab and here's where you can set up the quality of your stream I, I had to adjust this the other day when I had a bunch of frame drops and uh, what it seemed to be the connection issues, uh, just a lot of lag and buffering that was going on on my stream because for some reason, uh, after I moved here and had to get a bit of a different internet package, I needed to adjust how I was streaming to be a little bit more lenient on my connection here. So I had to drop my bitrate from 8,000 kbps uh, down to 6,000 kbps and adjust my, my preset quality from uh, max quality down to quality. And that seemed to clear up a lot of the issues I was having in my stream where I was dropping frames like crazy the other day, just out of nowhere. So those situations happen. It didn't happen the first time I streamed after I moved, but it happened that last time. So that lets me know that I need, I need to adjust my settings a bit. So don't forget this screen, like, um, you jump on, hop on YouTube, you know, maybe go to Epos Vox or Alpha Gaming Channel or whomever that um and watch your video and see if you can find the settings that fits 
your connection, not just your preferences and how you like the stream to look, but also fits the internet that you have at your home. And that's it for this video. Hit the subscribe button. If you like what you saw today, hit the like button. Um, if you want to help me out with the YouTube algorithm <laughs> and I will, I will see you guys in another video. You have a good one. Bye.